He stole all the rubbers from Cal and I's nightstand. That's all, as far as I know, to this day, but Percival did catch him sniffing my undies once in the laundry room. Jesus. <laughs> the hell are you doing? Sniffing chicks' underwear, man. <laughs> you really are disgusting. Hello, friends, Trace Amounts of Science. Today we're getting back into roadkill beard. Oh, and you can't forget his, his mate, Bear Beard. Although we've been pretty soft on Bear Beard in the last couple parts, I don't know. Maybe the mask will come off eventually. We'll just have to see how it goes, so let's hop into it and see what we've got here today. Roadkill Beard, part number three, the triggering. Oh my god, are you triggered, bro? Bro, are you triggered? Tell me. <laughs> Hello again, Moon Horse. Yeah, shout out, Moon Horse. We just wanted to thank you for reading our stories. We're big fans and appreciate you greatly for giving us an outlet while entertaining others. Moon Horse is a fairly entertaining guy. I think he needs to come back from the ether, personally. Uh, part three will mostly be written by Percival, as he was present, and these events happened to him. Setting, Junkyard, in an even junkier house, where the vents were filled with mold, and, yeah, it was making us sick out of our minds. Characters, Roadkill Beard, RK for short, Bear Beard, or BB, Percival, that friend and current roommate who's writing this part, there's OP Suka, who wasn't present for most of these events, her partner Cal, who I was with during these events and not home, and there are some new but temporary characters, Misty and Brock, two new neighbors that just moved in behind us in a shitty, tiny apartment that was also on the junkyard property. MB is Mama Brock. Yeah, Brock's crazy mother. There's also Lester, the Molester, <laughs> or LM for short. You will learn soon why he is called this. I got a few guesses. You see, this is sort of going to run together with the Married Mary saga, isn't it? There's a Mo in that one. So now in my headcanon, they're, they're one and the same person, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Note that the rest of this will be told from Percival's point of view. So... Sometime in August, the week before OP and her boyfriend started their fall semester, we got new neighbors. Boo! We never actually planned on interacting with them, but Roadkill and Bearbeard have zero common sense, so they would go over and bother the neighbors, Misty and Brock, to bump cigarettes off them whenever they had run out. Here, yeah, can I borrow a, a cup of sugar? <laughs> with nicotine in it. Extra nicotine, if you got it. <laughs> Cigarettes, 10 packs a day. I love the taste of Thai tobacco in a butt buffet. Brock smoked on the porch fairly often, so I would hear Roadkill leave the house and start his Hey, how you doing? routine before bumming a cigarette and chatting him up for the few minutes that he smoked it before asking to take a second back to Bearbeard. Bro, I gave you one, why don't you fuck off? <laughs> uh -huh. I just need one more for like my uncle and my cousin and my grandma. This will make me not want to smoke on my own porch. I'll start smoking in the back. Blow it out the bathroom window. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Anyway, one day, it wasn't Brock sitting out on the porch. It was Lester. I was asleep at the time and had woken up to roadkill, barging into my room, where I slept in the nude, more creepy shit later with that, sadly, to tell me that he was having a guest over and that I should come out and meet him. No, I'm not here for your ego or your guest's ego. Please allow me to continue to sleep. Roadkill, of course, had not asked to have anyone over. We all lived there and we all mutually agreed to ask before guests came over. A little more information about me, Percival. I'm a five foot tall trans male with a lot of trauma. I have severe PTSD from several events over my lifetime. Roadkill is what I like to call a trans chaser who would go after anyone who identified as non-binary. Bearbeard, myself, and Suka are on that spectrum, which is why the comments were so frequent. Well, the world certainly is a rich tapestry, isn't it? So, Roadkill leaves my room, and I get dressed, and I'm guessing that Lester had already been in the house when Roadkill told me. Great. That's when I walk in and see a near 60-year-old, his teeth either black or completely missing, and I could smell the alcohol as soon as I walked into the room. His hair was stringy, and he smiled at me. Yeah, he's got like a golem smile. Rotten, <laughs> 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 
And I'm already internally freaking the hell out because every red flag is going off in my head just from the way this dude is looking at me. Just ask him to his face. Be like, why the fuck are you looking at? Are you plotting on me? Is that what's happening right now? We could take this to the next level if you want. <laughs> he does want to take it to the next level, just not in that way. Anyway, uh, OP says, I introduce myself because I am sadly polite until the day that I die. Which, yeah, common theme in these neckbeard stories. But I implore you to consider being less polite in the future, at least a little bit, when it's warranted. Somebody comes into your room and wakes you up to meet some stranger, you don't have to do it. But indeed, Lester doesn't even tell me his name before replying, You look like you should be sitting in my lap. I froze, and my mind just went out the window. Now, even Roadkill and Bearbeard, who was also in the room, were uncomfortable. I continued to stare at him as he kept talking to me like this. You're a big girl, misgendering me. I could still show you a good time. What's your problem? Don't you want to sit in my lap? What the f*** is wrong with you? Have you ever gotten a yes answer to that question? <laughs> like ever, even once. Even if I were inclined to actually sit in your lap, my back and hair are going to smell like your rotten alcoholic breath, and my pants are going to smell like your fetid crotch, probably to the point that I'll have to burn them, so no. No, I don't think I'd like to sit in your lap. <laughs> Lay it down as flat as possible. What do you want? Obi says, at this point, I was holding back tears. When I tried to speak in anger, it became a broken, I'm a man, first of all, and second, don't talk to me like that. It's disgusting. All right, not swinging as hard as you could have, but you swung, and that's important. Good for you. Lester started a, oh, come on now, and I left the room immediately, slamming my bedroom door. Roadkill finally used his pea-sized brain to get this nasty meth muppet out of our frickin' house. I later learned from Roadkill that Lester also grabbed him by the dong. <laughs> <laughs> he let a fucking creep into our house. Later that night, the cop showed up to arrest the same man for a domestic charge that Misty had called for Brock's mom, who was angry with her. Yeah, it's a lot of fun living in the junkyard. Lots of fun and activities every single day. <laughs> like, why would you not vet someone very heavily before you let them into your house? Even people that I've known for years, I'm, I'm generally like, yeah, I don't really want you here for an extended period. This is my space. Do you understand that? I mean, some do, but I ain't taking the gamble. <laughs> Just stay out. I would like to tell you some side events that occurred during the entire time living in the junkyard house. <laughs> my room, Percival's room, was attached to the laundry room. You had to go through my room to get to it, and I slept in the nude. Bro, like, have you considered swapping rooms? <laughs> I have nightmares, and sleeping in clothing makes me feel like I'm choking. Roadkill found this out by not knocking and coming into my room to do laundry. This started innocently. He was just doing laundry. And then it turned into me waking up to him standing in the laundry room door and staring at me. I woke up to this several times, and he would greet me, saying, hey, He was just doing the laundry. I didn't say anything, which was my own mistake. I've caught him standing above me, while I'm having PTSD night terrors and watching me until I woke up, and this happened pretty often over several months. It was so bad that I began having night terrors of him playing with his putrid little peanut right above me. I was being severely emotionally manipulated by Roadkill and Bearbeard because of my paranoia and other mental health symptoms that they used to control me, playing on fears and gaining empathy by crying to me. I felt like I had no one that I could actually talk to, so I went batshit, basically. Uh, more on that at another time. For now, I think this is it. I need a fat nap after writing this emotionally draining tale, but it's nice to get it off my chest. Thank you, and good night, the next part coming soon. So it seems like Roadkill invited Lester over because he saw a bit of himself in him. You know, birds of a feather and that type of stuff. Although little did he know Lester was far deeper down the rabbit hole than Roadkill, but I think that's just something that comes with age. 
If Roadkill continues down this path, he'll get there eventually. Watching people as they sleep. <laughs> Just be like, I'm doing my laundry. Yeah, you don't need to stand in the fucking laundry room. How about, as a matter of fact, we either switch rooms or during the time that I'm sleeping, the laundry room's completely closed. It's non-negotiable. I bought a padlock. There's there's a lot of different ways to go about it. And OP does acknowledge the mistakes that they've made. So good. I hope that you'll do better in the future. Although it might take a few more parts to get there. So let's see what happens at part number four. Roadkill Beard, part four, the beginning of a long end. I mean, there's nine parts, including an update. There's also a couple special stories. So we're starting the end, like, halfway through the saga. <laughs> Which is an interesting choice, but okay. Hello again, it's Suka here, and I will be telling this little installment. I hope you had a very Merry Christmas, Moon Horse, and the L Celestial Herd, and Red Eggs, and the Jerry Army, too. Christmas feels like it was forever ago, but it'll roll back around again, don't worry. OP's just showing a little love in advance. And normally I wouldn't reflect that love, except for the fact that you've fucked up the formatting again. <laughs> so, we'll work around it, but really it doesn't bode well for a tale. It's like, hey, I, I did this as a first draft, and either like it or don't, fuck you. <laughs> it's like, well, it's middling for me at the moment. If we had to put it on the beard tier list, even this far into it, I'm looking at like a, a C or a D. Did you see that beard tier list live stream? It's four hours long, but yeah, worth a watch for fans of the channel Deep Lore. Anyway, let me pop open a word pad and read whatever the hell is supposed to be. <laughs> now to the tale. This is the beginning of the end. By that, I mean, though we are only in the third month of what would be many living with Roadkill and his partner Bearbeard, this is when everyone in the house was officially done with Roadkill's bullshit. The problem was, we had absolutely no money. Moving out would mean needing another place to stay, and my partner and I provide for ourselves. There was no way we could afford a security deposit on a new place as well as first month's rent. We felt stuck, and we tried to make the best of it. I mean, if you're feeling unsafe in your own home, I don't know, there's, there's ways to go. Contact a relative, contact a shelter, hoof it on the streets for a month and, and save up every penny you make. They're not comfortable things to do, no, but sometimes needs must. You're never stuck. That's just a lie we tell ourselves. Anyway, OP says, even if you put makeup on a pig, it's still a pig. Yeah, so don't live al alongside a pig any longer than you have to. Roadkill only did his best to drive everyone insane. After Cal and I heard from Percival that he let a psycho into our home, we had a big fight. Things were tense, and Roadkill saw Percival siding with Cal and I. This meant that he had only his partner Bearbeard to defend him, and that just would not do! The odds were not in his favor, and he could see Percival and I were forming a rather strong friendship. I mean, when your options for friends are OP or Roadkill Beard, I think it does make a pretty easy choice. He needs to work on his interpersonal skills, that's what needs to happen. Roadkill Beard, I mean, not Percival. Well, Percival too a little bit, but Roadkill Beard even more. Uh, so, of course, this indeed would not do, so he started referring to Percival as Dr. Percival and made it known that he needed Percival to act like his therapist. Oh, yeah. Great way to get somebody on your side. Utilize them for your own means. What? <laughs> what? Uh, Percival hated this but had obviously made it known that he was available if Roadkill or Bearbeard needed to talk. Yeah, that's why I don't do that shit. I'm like, DMs are closed, don't come in my live stream trauma dump and neither. I do not have the emotional bandwidth. I'm sorry you're going through whatever that shit is, but I'm not qualified to fix it for you, okay? I could bounce some ideas around, make funny about it a little bit. <laughs> uh, that's literally all I could do though. Of course, Bearbeard and Roadkill both took full advantage of this. Hell yeah, free therapy. Percival would be nice and put up with it and offer them advice. Roadkill would not listen to any of the advice that Percival offered. Well, in my experience, people never do. <laughs> Roadkill would come to Percival and whine anytime I showed Cal affection. <laughs> he was insanely jealous of Cal and did not like that we were together. Because if we wouldn't be with him, then he didn't want me to be happy. 
Yeah, this situation is entirely untenable. What if he gets a bright idea one night to remove Cal from the picture, if you know what I mean? It's weird. It's really weird. One particular night, Cal and I were cuddling on the couch watching a movie. We weren't being overly affectionate, just sitting closely, an arm around my waist, and this drove Roadkill Beard mad. He made a big show of starting to cry and running into my room and then slamming the door. <laughs> I ran to my room to ask him what was wrong when he jumped off my bed and began screaming, Hey, how dare you go flaunting your affections with someone else when you know how I feel about you? <sighs> he was sobbing and I was so taken aback. I glared at him in that moment and replied, You have no right to yell at me or control my life. And then I slammed my door in his face, letting him have his moment to calm down because, yeah, I could at least give him that. What I didn't know was that the tears were crocodile tears, and he used this opportunity to go through my things. He stole all the rubbers from Cal and I's nightstand. That's all as far as I know to this day, but Percival did catch him sniffing my undies once in the laundry room. Jesus. <laughs> the hell are you doing? Sniffing chicks underwear, man. <laughs> you really are disgusting. Uh, there's some, some bona fide degeneracy. Also, the, the taking away of the protection, sort of hilarious in a way. He's like, if I can't have you, then you guys just have a baby together. That'll break you apart for sure. <laughs> I mean, it works sometimes, but it can also grow the bond stronger. My only trepidation there is like, I don't know, junkyard baby? Is that a great look? <laughs> Eh, whatever. I returned to my movie, and Roadkill went to whine about Cal and me not loving him to Percival. Between whining, he would badmouth Cal and myself, and this is where we discovered that he was a pathological liar. Is that what you call him? Pathological liars? Yeah, bam! That's what he was. Yeah, okay. That's what he is, and that's what we call him. <laughs> Bearbeard was, too, but Bearbeard I could ignore. He would just mumble to himself, but Roadkill made a show out of things. He would tell Percival that Cal and I hated him, that we said he was fat and ugly and annoying, and Cal and I had no idea and never treated Percival like anything other than a friend. But Percival had been hurt so many times before that he was wary. He began to shut us out and isolate himself in his room, not speaking to Cal or myself. He only interacted with Roadkill and Bearbeard, who would neg him constantly between the whining about how Cal and I wouldn't put up with their BS. They're just trying to win over the floating voters, that's what's going on. I'm often shocked about how Beards are just so terrible at social interaction, but then they have this hidden talent for social manipulation. Anywho, Cal and OP were looking to get frisky after the movie, and between the fighting caused by an overload of stress and the fighting with Roadkill and Bearbeard, we both needed some time to ourselves. We were frustrated, and even more so when we discovered the rubbers were missing. I confronted Roadkill immediately because he had been the only one in my room. Roadkill confessed immediately, hey, Yeah, <laughs> Bearbeard and I were out, so uh, I figured I could just borrow yours. <laughs> uh, thanks for the good time. I was livid. You did not borrow somebody's rubbers, let alone go through their personal stuff because they were put up. And so I let him have it. I began yelling and letting loose everything that I'd been wanting to say for three months. You're such a child! You couldn't even ask, could you? You stole something that wasn't yours. You rifled through my fucking things! You're a creep, and you ruined my night. Do you know how pissed off I am? How dare you? You never asked for anything. How do you not care how anyone feels other than yourself? You let a creep into our home, and now you've ruined my night! Yeah, you said that part already, actually, about the ruined night. It's fine. <laughs> His face scrunched up and tears began flowing, but I did not care. I stormed out of the house and went on a walk to cool off. Bearbeard shouted something like, How dare you talk to my baby like that? But I ignored him on my way out. Should have punched him in the solar plexus. Like you want some too, bitch? Bam! <laughs> uh, now get out of my way. 
then again, you do have to come back eventually and live amongst these people. So yeah, maybe ignoring them is the better idea. Anyway, I just walked around on dirt roads for an hour, taking my time to cool off. When I came back, I found everyone shouting Roadkill Beard's name, and Roadkill Beard was nowhere to be found. What's going on? I asked, and Bear Beard got up in my face. Well, as much as he could, being four foot nine. <laughs> this is your fault! You said those terrible things, and now Roadkill's run off! He screamed slash cried. He wasn't anywhere around the house, so we hopped into Cal's car and started going down the only road in town. <laughs> Night was falling at this point. We all stuck our heads out the window and called his name like we were looking for a lost dog. Roadkill! Where are you? I think I saw a skunk back there. No, sir, you misunderstand. We're looking for a human being. Oh, that's legal. You don't want to go to jail for a hit and run, do you? <laughs> uh, whatever. And OP says, in truth, yeah, we really were looking for a lost bitch. <laughs> Eventually, we found him walking towards home from in town, and he was still sobbing. In his arms was Cal and I's change jar. Not Roadkill's change jar, not Bear Beard's, no. This was all of Cal and I's save loose change from the whole semester. We were saving it. All of the change was gone except for a small layer of coins at the bottom. It was filled at least over halfway when I dropped my change into it that morning. Where's all our money? Why did you take all our money? I yelled, and Bearbeard shouted at me. Enough! You've caused enough problems talking to him like that! Oh yeah, why don't we just get, let him get away with murder then? We better not send him to jail for it because he reacts poorly. Do you hear the things that come out of your mouth? Why don't you shut the fuck up, stay in your lane, and go and get your man before I get him. I got the knife right here. <laughs> but Opie doesn't do any of that. Instead, rolls their eyes, and Roadkill thrusts the shittiest, cheapest gas station rubbers into my hands, along with my now practically empty change jar. I tripped and I lost a sandal and I dropped all the change and I I just wanted to make it up to you for ruining your night. I just want you to love me. me. He sobbed. Bro, that's a lot. He didn't drop the change. Come on. He drank four cans of Monster at the get in get out before he decided to come back. And then as an afterthought, he's like, oh. I got enough to replace the rubbers and try and justify my theft. <laughs> OP shouts back, This is literally the most childish way you could have handled this situation. And you stole our money! Are you fucking kidding me? We drove him home, still sobbing. I did not care. I went straight to my room, locked the door, and started nursing the migraine that Roadkill had just caused me. Cal gave Roadkill a chewing out as well, something along the lines of, I can't believe you made me look like an idiot in front of the whole town, driving down the road at night calling your name like a fucking dog. You are just unbelievable. There were people outside, and you were screaming at my girlfriend like a psycho. At this point, Roadkill stormed into his side of the house and slammed the door, locking it from his side, which was the only side with a functioning lock, so he could access our side anytime, and we couldn't access theirs at all. Sounds like you need to install a second lock, doesn't it? This door only opens when we agree mutually that it opens, which means that, yeah, it never opens. <laughs> Uh, Roadkill, of course, learned absolutely nothing from this horrifying incident. He still treated Cal and I like garbage, still talked trash about us to Percival, along with bringing all of that emotional garbage to Percival. Percival only realized that he was being negged shortly after the rubber incident and one other. Roadkill had begun working at a local restaurant chain that's named after a certain blue hedgehog. Oh yeah, they got good slushies in there. <laughs> While working there, he met the object of his obsession, a young goth girl who was 17 and still in high school. Let that child alone. God damn, why? Every time. Why? Leave the child alone. Focus on pulling yourself together, you mess. Keep in mind that Roadkill was nearly 23. She began flirting with him through text, and he flirted back, 
eventually soliciting nudes from her on several occasions, which he then very proudly showed off to Percival during one of his moments with Dr. Percy. When he admitted this to Percival and showed him the images, Percival immediately began telling him that it was wrong and he needed to stop. After this, Percival came to Cal and I and we talked about everything. The lies he was telling Percival, the underage co-worker, the rubber incident, as it forever became known, and our general predicament. We decided to band together and slowly began to distance ourselves from Roadkill, while simultaneously trying to save Bearbeard from what looked like a relationship full of maltreatment. Unfortunately, Bearbeard was hooked on that musky Kool-Aid, and though he could have seen some of the evidence we brought forth to him that Roadkill was being unfair, he never changed anything. Yeah, you can't help people that don't want help. Roadkill would openly chase anyone appearing female or that had boobas. In fact, I think that was his only requirement. Bearbeard told him and us many times that he didn't like it, but Roadkill Beard would not stop. And Bearbeard had no problem with him chasing after someone underage. He said that he did, but again, nothing changed. Yeah, actions speak louder than words. At this point, you guys are both in the same boat. We want to pretend that Bearbeard's not participating in any of this, but he's standing up for Roadkill, protecting him from the consequences of his own actions, not saying anything or taking a stand when dude is doing something wrong. So yes, you're part of the problem. Talk is cheap. I don't want to fucking hear it. Uh, this is the beginning of the end, because Percival, Cal, and I banded together and began trying to really find a way out of our situation. Unfortunately, it would take us a really long time to get enough money together. Y'all got a car, right? Just live in the car for a little bit. It's fine. You can hack it for a month, I promise you. Load an emulator on your phone. Hang out at the local library when you're not at work. Take a shower at a gym. It's not a great situation, but it's got to be better than the situation you're currently living with. No? I guess not. Note that all quotes are verbatim, as this is from memory, but these memories are pretty distinct. Thank you, and we hope to be posting part five soon. A slightly less chilling tale about our one and only Christmas in that horrible junkyard pit. We really enjoy the way that you produce content, Mood Horse. Good night! Yeah, once upon a time. I don't know if I harped enough on how truly ridiculous it is for somebody to stay in a house with somebody who, like, actively dislikes your domestic partner. Like, I'd be making all sorts of moves to get up and out as soon as possible, not just like, I guess we'll save some money to move. <laughs> it's a rather laid-back way to handle it. Could have put yourself into some danger making some moves like that. That's all I'm saying. I'm glad you got out eventually, but we got a, a bit of a ways to go until we're actually there. So why not? We'll do one more of these. Three parts in one episode? Sounds great! So yes, this is part five. This is only the middle of the journey. I mean, yeah, it is, but you said it's the beginning of the end. So like I said, the end starts in the middle. <laughs> uh, anyway, after the rubber incident, I refused to interact with Roadkill unless I absolutely had to. And I was polite in the few times that I had to speak to him. Bearbeard was so upset about how Roadkill acted and yet blamed me for it. They were both threatening to kick me out at this point because I didn't want to be friends with Roadkill anymore. I was really scared that my boyfriend and I were going to be homeless. I had to start being nicer to Roadkill if I wanted to keep living in this hellhole. Yeah, why would you want to keep living in a hellhole? Good. It's time to embrace change. Anyway, they demanded to see our receipts because they thought we were wasting money on frivolous things that could instead go to the house. What? <laughs> we refused to do this and instead gave them a quote with how much we spend on the house each month. Even if we were buying whatever, yeah, that's not any of their business. Percival, Cal, and I all reiterated that them wanting to see receipts was toxic and unhealthy, as well as none of their fucking business. So what, they feel like just entitled to your money or something? It's never a good look. I, I've seen it before. What if wifey's friends was married to a dude that made her like pin receipts on the fridge for everything that she spent? Which I guess it's okay if you're just keeping track, but yeah, he, he'd give her the, the third degree over it. They're separated now, by the way. No divorce in the Philippines, but they are separated. 
Not before they had a kid, of course. Unfortunate. Anyway, yeah, OP says when we asked them if we could see their receipts, they refused because they bought a brand new TV, tobacco, rolling papers, some of that devil's lettuce, and Lord knows what else. They had bought all of this with their work checks while they were simultaneously $700 behind on their part of the rent. Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> Uh, you think you get to make demands about anything? I'm gonna throw that in your face every chance that I get. Roadkill had begun working at a chicken plant after he quit Sonic, for reasons unknown. Thankfully, this also swiftly ended his relationship with that high school senior. Some of you might think, what's the big deal? She's one year under the age limit. And just, no, 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 no. The legal limit is 18 for a reason, and he was... 23 turning 24 and already had a boy just no yeah i don't know who's gonna make an argument like that if you think that's an okay thing to say then yeah you can leave the community right now nobody's gonna miss you one year under the limit what's the last part of that under the limit even then fucking age gap stuff weirds me out all the time so yes i agree no <laughs> just no roadkill beard's new job came with a bigger paycheck None of which was spent on rent, to my knowledge, because a big storm was brewing, and we were about to find ourselves at the mercy of our crackhead landlords. They can steal the batteries from your remote, try to sell it back to you? Yeah, <laughs> we've seen it before. You see, Christmas came and went, and for a few weeks, everything was peaceful. I started giving them my customer service face and avoiding them at every opportunity, Roadkill Beard's obsession with me went to creepy levels, and I told him that I was uncomfortable having any kind of relationship with someone who would so easily take advantage of me and has no respect for my privacy or belongings. Which seems like a reasonable thing to say, but Bear Beard took this as advice for revenge against me. You see? You see? He's a piece of shit too. I knew this the whole time. <laughs> He started taking things that didn't belong to him, and either losing or breaking them, and then refusing to pay me back for replacements. He cut up a heating blanket that my aunt got me because I'd recently been diagnosed with anemia at the time. The heating blanket was in tethers. Even Cal yelling at them that they needed to pay me back went nowhere. Their cat pissed on $300 worth of my shoes that were in my closet, their cat pissed on Percival's shoes. Roadkill started to be more aggressive toward Percival in private since I was no longer paying him any attention. Roadkill kept talking about how he wanted to be in a relationship with Percival. And if Percival ever felt like doing it, then he should come to Roadkill. He kept making excuses to brush up against Percival and touching him in the no-no square. No, no, don't touch me there. This is my no-no square. Get your no-no square, dog! Yay! Ah! Roadkill kept pestering Percival about how I didn't want to spend time with him anymore. And this led to him begging Percival to spend more time with them. Percival was getting freaked out, and Roadkill and Bearbeard wouldn't stop, and then... During a Dr. Percival session, where Roadkill would come and moan to Percival about all his problems, he suddenly stopped and looked to Percival. Uh, do you ever jerk it to the sound of Bear Beard and me doing it on the other side of your wall? Because their rooms did indeed share a wall, Percival blew up and reminded them that they were just friends, saying, You need to stop! I can't believe you! Roadkill then got mad and snapped, Can't you take a joke, Percival? It's not that serious. And he promptly saw himself out of Percival's room. Yeah, I think this would be the end of the therapy sessions. Like, y you would never say this to your therapist, would you? I mean, maybe you would if you're trying to get those really good drugs. <laughs> uh, what do I know, really? This is about the point where you're supposed to put your foot down. Be like, it is that serious. I'm super uncomfortable. I have voiced it to you a thousand times. And I'm going to start ignoring you as well because of this. Be very clear that it is because of this. If he decides to change his behavior for reals, maybe let him back in if you want. But overall, my take, yeah, this, this drama's not worth it. He's gone? Good. Fucking stay gone. <laughs> Percival proceeded to call the hospital and put himself in that hoe because... 
Roadkill was just too much at this point. Yeah, I guess that's a getaway. Roadkill and Bearbeard would visit him after Cal and I, and of course they would continue negging Percival, telling him that Cal and I hated him and were so glad that he was gone. Percival knew it was all BS because Cal and I had just been to see him, and we were actually concerned for his well-being. I'm surprised Roadkill Beard didn't show up like, So, uh, in these hospital beds, you think they could take the weight of two people? I'd be like, yeah, Roadkill, but maybe two people. But I think you count for about three or four just by yourself. <laughs> and shortly after Percival returned from the hospital a week later, a storm blew in. There's that storm again. It just keeps blowing. <laughs> Lightning and thunder crashed, and the rain was coming down like a true gully washer. Gully washer's a southern term, literally meaning the rain creates a gully for you Yankees that might not know southern slang. Well, thank you for that. I am indeed a West Coast degenerate, but I probably could have put two and two together. I know what a gully is. I know how things get washed in the rain, but I appreciate your insight. <laughs> The water rose out of the ditches and into the junkyard, effectively washing half the junk down the highway. Hey, fuck yeah, that'll fix it too. <laughs> there was three feet of water outside of our door and it was starting to come in. Half of our belongings got soaked and ruined, including our mattresses because we were too poor to afford bed frames. Damn, dude. That is hellish. The one time we got a typhoon that actually flooded our house, Wifey and I also didn't have money for nice things. I think my computer is the most expensive item in the house, so we just put that up. And then the mattress, yeah, that was inflatable. Oh, there was also like a little mini fridge. But yeah, we survived. Took a while to clean up, but not all bad. New experiences, you know? <laughs> uh, OP says, we all banded together in that house putting our differences aside to rescue as many of our belongings as we could and also find a hotel that would accept our pets. We went back in the morning to ask our landlords if they could put us up somewhere else and they said, you can leave. They were evicting us because roadkill was $700 behind on rent. Yep, about fucking time. <laughs> we were furious with roadkill for lying to us about paying his part but we couldn't do anything about it now. In an effort to make us move faster, the landlord then cut our electricity. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's illegal. But yeah, as if we needed more signs from the universe that it's time to get up and out. We called the sheriff, but he said there wasn't anything they could do unless we wanted to go to court. So we just tucked tail and crashed at a hotel. We rented a storage locker for our furniture and made a plan. Cal was the only one with credit good enough to be accepted by a local realty firm, and that meant that he was going to be the head of household on the next lease. We found a cute cottage and worked out a deal with the landlord in terms of our animals. The only problem was, we only had two bedrooms. No one wanted to share a room with Roadkill and Bearbeard, so Cal and I bit the bullet and shared our room with Percival. Wait, why the fuck are Roadkill- You bringing them with you? <laughs> What the hell is wrong with you people? Uh, they're the ones that ruined everything. At what point do you scrape them off? Gutless people drive me fucking nuts. You know that? You had a bite of a poop sandwich and they're like, you want another bite? You're like, no, I hate it, but I'm going to do it anyways. Like, <laughs> uh, help me to understand why. Ugh, hope he says we got dividers and it wasn't that bad sharing a room. Our only problem was that as soon as Bearbeard and Roadkill moved into their room, it started to smell like feet, and would eventually become so overwhelming that Percival and I would gag, but I guess that's a tale for another time. Yeah, I guess it is. There's a lot left to be explained, like... <laughs> You, you could have ended it there. You could have gone and had like a nice house. Maybe you had to take on a little bit more of the rent or something like that. But it would have been yours for realsy reels. Instead, you let the two tag alongs tag along and continue to ruin your life. And then you're like, I'm, I'm going to complain about it even more. Isn't this a terrible thing that happened to me? It's a terrible thing that you did to yourself. You can't control how somebody else acts. You can only control your own actions. Take charge of your existence. For God's sake, life's not a, a lazy river ride where you just go around bumping into people and shit. Like, <laughs> go where you want to go. Steer, damn you. 
I'm so frustrated. Maybe it's just the day I've been having, but I can't do any more of this today. So I appreciate you guys watching. Click all the buttons. I'd appreciate that, especially uh, Patreon. That's a very important button on this channel. Yes. Thank you to everybody supporting YouTube memberships as well. I appreciate you. If you can't afford to do it, don't sweat it. I just appreciate you hanging out, especially if you listen this far. It's a bit of a rough one to get through. It's only because it's a request of Lady Angelia that I'm pushing through it. But we'll get there eventually. Anyway, always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it, and I shall see you in the next one. So until then, bye-bye. Go ahead and cut him open. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Promise, where is he?